Hello, everyone. We are uh, joining yes, one of my friends live for a, a Topher Spin Meteorites live check-in for a meteorite hunt in Brazil. Uh, it is Today is uh, the 27th of August, and on August 19th, so just uh, a week and a day ago in Brazil, at 10 o'clock in the morning, a bolide event happened. Uh, it was witnessed by a lot of people, 10 o'clock in the morning, and um, one of our friends, Roberto Vargas, has been there for about three days now, uh, hunting the meteorites, um, making contacts with the locals, and just getting absorbed in the Brazilian culture. So we're, we are going to go live right now to our buddy, Roberto Vargas, who is out in Brazil, hunting one of the world's freshest meteorites. Welcome, thanks for joining us, Roberto. How's it going, guys? So um, I'm out of the car, so for some reason, like the audio isn't that great. Are you guys hearing me well? Yep, I will let you know if we have any difficulties whatsoever. Sounds good. So this is uh, kind of like the outskirts of Santa Filomena. Um, and that is actually number five, is actually the house that got hit um, by the house smasher. It was, uh, I believe, 469 grams. It um, smashed through the roof behind the uh, satellite over there. And it uh, actually just missed the, um, the lady that was sleeping there uh, like minutes before. Like she, she had just walked out and she heard a bit loud crash and then uh, they found the meteorite on the bed with um, pieces of the slate kind of uh, just broken through. Wow. So this is kind of the back of the house. It's kind of hard to see with the sun. But interestingly enough, when they, after the meteorite crashed through, they knew nothing about the value of like the shingles and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. So the, they just replaced it and threw their shingles like right around here. Oh man, please um, tell me someone picked them up, you picked them up. Obviously, uh, those tiles are no longer there. <laughs> uh, I got a piece and I know that, uh, Mike bought the hammer stone and uh, most of the tiles. And that's Mike Farmer. So I'm gonna do a little um, drive of the strewn field. Now, um, Roberto, I see a bunch of, uh, I saw a bunch of kids out there are do, are they excited at all? Do they understand? Do they appreciate what's going on, or is it just are you just some weirdo? <laughs> oh no, they they appreciate it. I've done a, I've done a lot of educating over the last couple of days about uh, what meteorites look like, uh, why they're black, um, the the magnetism. Um, these people have never, you know, they they have no knowledge about uh meteoritic so uh it, it's all new to them you know mm -hmm. uh an interesting question i had uh recently is um you know are there any meteorites from the sun and i had mm -hmm. to explain that like the sun is just a big ball of gas there's no actual su mm -hmm. su like solidity to it like for it to come out here and stuff like that yeah mm -hmm. so i thought i thought that was pretty cool yeah. Um, but you know, I, uh, they're out, they're out here hunting and stuff like that. I mean, you have, you have a team of really skilled hunters out here, Mike Farmer, Rob Ward, um, you know, who have kind of, you know, they've been doing this for fucking decades at this point. And, uh, you know, they've been skunked on this one up until recently, uh, Rob Ward found one, but Mike Farmer still hasn't found one. The two Hondurans that are with, uh, oh, the two Hondurans that are with, uh, 
Hi guys. <laughs> yeah, I think we we lost him, uh, which is which is bound to happen. We we know that he's in a place in a really rural area in in Brazil. So we'll give. I had a, a question for Roberto, um, and I guess I I should just ask now. But I wonder if the the woman who almost got hit would possibly serve as a witness account when classifying this meteorite. She'd be probably a great person to talk to. Absolutely, yeah. Because part of the the NOMCOM, what they're doing now is they're they're classifying um, falls as potential falls or confirmed falls. Um, so yeah, that would definitely help to corroborate that it was a confirmed fall. So we got uh, uh, Roberto who uh, has joined us back now, but uh, looks like he's on the side of the planet because we're we're now sideways. <laughs> Is it still coming in sideways? Yep, we're at 90 degrees. There we go. Yep. All right, so um, this is part of the strewn field. This is kind of across the street from where we just were, the, uh, the house smasher. But numerous pieces have been found in this uh, general vicinity. Um, what I was saying before before I got cut off is like, so, so um, it's been really hard for us to find meteorites, but um, the locals are doing a great job. How many have been found that you know of? Uh, it's hard to put an exact number on stones. Um, I I know of I know that uh, Andres. Mochila, I think his name is, from uh, Brazil, has found two or three. Uh, Rob Ward has found one. Um, the rest have been uh, purchases that uh, we've just made in the field. Hmm. Well, that's good. That At but, least that helps the, uh, the locals there. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, absolutely. Um, one of the, one of my larger purchases which um, I'll be showing later on. Uh, mm. the, the people said that uh, they're gonna be able to build a new house with the money that wow. they got from the four meteorites I bought from them. That is amazing. I mean, the meteorites yeah. can actually change the life because obviously you're not in a, uh, a high rent area right now. <laughs> no, as you can see, um, you know, a lot of the houses uh well I'll, I'll show you in, in a little bit but a lot of the houses are pretty simple construction no frills uh some of them most of them actually don't even have uh running water wow yeah so um you know a lot of, a lot of stones have actually been found while people were outside pooping Jeez. they just uh they're like squatting around and they look and there's a meteorite Wow. So um, this is a house where I bought um, four meteorites from, uh, four, four pretty large stones in the 100 to 200 gram range. Nice. And, uh, yeah. So the, the interesting thing is the guy's name is Loran, right? So Loran was outside when the meteorite happened, when the meteorite fell, and the two of the four stones landed within he said within a couple um meters from where he was standing that is crazy. so so That's this guy dream. actually saw them hit the ground oh, you know god Cr kind of crazy there, yeah. i mean the the percentage of humans on the planet that can actually claim that and and without lying uh, minuscule i've yeah. always wondered i mean you know go ahead go ahead kirsten I was just saying, I always wondered what that would look like, you know, how fast. Yeah. Seems like it'd be incredibly uh, fast and astonishing. Yeah, he said he said he just, he didn't see them, actually. He just heard them hit the ground, and when he looked, there were stones. <laughs> there was dust and stones, you know? Damn. Now, the meteorite you're hunting right now hasn't been giving a name, but 
um, we're assuming it is an H5 or an H6 based on some of the samples that you've uh, uh, purchased already. Correct, correct. So, um, so that's what that's where you hunt, and it's it it is basically all pricker bushes. Wow. So a lot of the guys here have a lot of uh, bloody arms and bloody legs. Uh, uh, there's a team from um, from the Brazilian University and from uh, the Brazilian Museum. Uh, the, the, the team of astronomers actually um, found a rattlesnake out here. Huh. So it's it's you know it's not it's not the safest thing in the world to be out here and I don't know if, if any of you know this I'm a I'm a spider guy so um, one of the things that fascinates me is uh, the most in my opinion the most beautiful spider in the world is from Brazil it's uh, iridescent pink and green and the most deadly spider in the world is from Brazil the Brazilian wandering spider so, what about the uh, that is like a little bit like Viagra but it it, it it kills you too that's the brazilian wandering spider their venom um is is lethal and it'll give you an erection right before you die <laughs> we should go out with a smile yeah <laughs> like, you go out like a real man <laughs> so this is this is it man i mean this is uh santa filomena at at sunset um you know some of the this this fall is actually really interesting because it, there was the house smasher, right? And then there were two stones that fell right in the center of town. Mm -hmm. So um, we haven't got, gotten into the town yet, but um, in the center of the town, there's like a little plaza and uh, a couple little shops and some more houses and there were there was a 2.8 kilos stone, which is there was a, a 2.8 kilo stone that that hit the uh, current. You went can yeah you're breaking up a little bit, but it was a uh, about a three kilo um, nose stone uh, nose cone stone that hit the plaza and was recovered almost immediately. Yeah, that that was that that's the main mass right now. Okay, and that's at the Brazilian museum. Well, it's it's slated for the Brazilian museum, not a private collection. Correct, correct. And then yeah. there was another. Uh, there... Sorry, I didn't. No, go what, ahead. What was the question? Uh, yeah. Was there any idea of how big the strewn field was based on accounts of people who found it? You know, I've I've heard a lot of things. Um, I don't I don't know. I, I think I've, until I've heard, more I've, people. I've, I've, I I've heard up to thirty-seven kilometers. Jeez. Wow, that means that it definitely uh, uh, hit its uh, its bolide point or, or its. Uh, you know, it's fragmentation point high up in the altitude to to rain. You know, that that big of a of a stream field would have to have a, a high termination. So, um, if any of you guys are, if any of you um, follow Strunify, um, I posted a, a video that was um, the link I actually got from the Strunify website. And it, it shows um, the meteorite entry from various different angles. Um, and this was a this was a daytime fireball. Mm -hmm. So that it's, it's pretty cool to to see. I, I actually really like that video. They did a really good job. What's neat about that video is because it's a daytime fall, you don't really see as much of the uh, the flame as much as you do see an object falling. It's really, exactly. it's, it's really unique. You can actually see that there's an, an object falling rather than just an ablating fireball, and, you know, and then you have no idea if there's anything there when, when all said and it's, done. It's a shiny, shiny object just falling. Yeah. And it, it was actually a pretty, 
a yeah. pretty steep angle. Yeah, it, it came in. It looked like about like eighty plus degrees. Yeah. Seems like a steep angle would cause more of an explosion than a gradual ablation. Yes, there was definitely um, a very large explosion. Every every one of the locals I spoke to about um, you know that were like there and awake and and everything, they all said it like. There was one large explosion, one large boom, and it was over, over, the, basically over the town. A little bit, a little bit. Um, I don't know what direction that would be, but yeah, a little bit off from the town. But the cool thing is, like, um, so I'm staying at a gas station, which is uh, it doubles as the only uh, motel in town, <laughs> and uh, meteorites were found. Right across the street from there. Oh, jeez. So you can like go out and search, and it's it's pretty cool. I was gonna say, how far? Be, just a second. Uh, just a far? moment. I was gonna say it must be fun to be in an area where you can just basically hop out wherever you want, and it's part of a strewn field. No, I think no team. Did he turn his camera off? Yeah. Yeah, he's uh, conversing with the local there. Okay. I'm glad okay. we were able to kind of recreate this moment because the last night's recording kind of bit the dust. So okay. this is great documentation. So, what's that? This is great documentation in general. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, uh, this is primary sources. So. Yeah. Yeah, I, you can't uh, argue with uh, with the provenance of my stones when uh, I say Roberto who got them for me and he's physically there picking them up. <laughs> Were you uh, getting a date for tonight or something? <laughs> no. So um, when you're coming into the town, and I probably should have, there's a there's like a checkpoint. It's a it's a COVID nineteen checkpoint, and basically what they do is um they take your temperature to make sure that uh you don't have you don't have a temperature if you do have a temperature um you know they just want to make sure that you you're either going to quarantine or you're passing through if you're if you're staying um you have to take a covid test hmm. and and upon arrival in brazil you take a, a covid test as well it's it's kind of odd to see um like no offense to brazil you, you see the 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 houses that people are are set up in and living in and compare that to you know phoenix arizona and then you look at uh, i have not seen a checkpoint for covid in america at all um, you have to go out of your way in order to get tested, stand in line for hours, and then wait weeks for the results. So, anyway, we're not going to get political here, but. <laughs> I totally understand Another what you're saying. thing is, um, okay, so. So that's the uh that's the gas station um that also doubles as the uh motel. Um I was just told to go get my mask, so that's what I'm doing. Oh <laughs> I was a bad boy. Breaking the rules, breaking the rules. Oh go home. <laughs> So just a moment, all right, guys. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I've heard of getting you know worry, hot man. dogs and stuff at a, uh, at a at a convenience store or a gas store, but you know, not a cot. <laughs> yeah. Glad you guys were able to join us right now. We got uh, Christian, uh, Fred, um, Jordan, and uh, Matthew with us as well. Um, Making up for a little bit of uh, lost media last night. I couldn't believe that uh, didn't have a recording of it. I'm like, oh my god! It, 
you know, each hangout gets better than the previous one. And I'm like, how am I going to top it? How's it going to get better? Uh, and then we have a live call in from uh, Roberto out in the field hunting. Uh, we have um, we had uh, Jonathan O'Mara join us from Brazil, showing off his collection Gopher. with an interpreter. Gopher. You're yeah. becoming the Joe Rogan of meteorites. How's that? I just never you got all up. the big information going on. This is like the best podcast of oh, meteorites. Good. Good. Well, that's I'll take it, man. I it, it, I want to have uh, I want to have content out there for people who enjoy meteorites. Um, I'm sure I'm not the only person Googling meteorites on like iTunes and find a podcast. So mm -hmm. it's cool. Nice. Got Roberto back. So uh, I'm back in. Um, so this is the this is the uh, hotel room or truck stop room or gas station room, whatever you want to call it. So um, it's it's not huge. It's got two twin size beds. It's kind of a mess right now. Uh, I brought my own uh, uh, fucking cheetah print sheets, <laughs> <laughs> and then uh, this is actually hold on. This is the bathroom, so it's kind of a two for one deal. Yeah. You can poop while you take a shower, <laughs> which is <laughs> I've never seen uh, a a, a, a toilet with a remote bidet. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. From above. Like, yeah. I just want to clean it all. So, you got to uh, be the downward dog. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so, but you know what? For $7 a night, I'm not complaining. That's crazy. And it's got, it's got Wi-Fi. So, and I didn't have to make a reservation. Although, um, it filled up quick. I was very, I was very fortunate. Because... <clears throat> Basically, every room is taken up by meteorite hunters right now. Hmm. And the closest town to you is, uh, I know that an, main... an, an hour away. Okay, that, that's, a, that's the, but uh, San Paulo, the, the, like the big town, is three hours or thereabouts? Uh, uh, Petrolina is that's like the next biggest town that's three hours away. Okay. So I needed to go to an ATM recently. Um, and the nearest ATM was in Petrolina, which was three hours away. Holy mackerel. Jeez. So I'm from Connecticut. That's like driving from Connecticut to Pennsylvania to get money out of the bank. It's <laughs> <laughs> fucking ridiculous. <laughs> they make sure you try, to, you try to do that once. That's it. You try to like get all your money yeah. once and then that's it. Um, because it's, it's just, I mean, you know, you go through money. Mm -hmm. So, um, I guess I can show you guys my stones now. Is, is that uh, unless oh. you guys want to do some some Q and A's or? I would love to see these things, man. Um, I'm okay. so I'm so pumped about these. I mean, well, you, you you figured nine days ago they were flying around in, in ice of space. Yep, eight days ago. Yeah, there's only yeah. one meteorite that's fresher than this, and that's the Moroccan fall that happened yeah. like three days ago. Um, but that's a, a carbonaceous meteorite, and uh, and I'm a, I'm an aspiring meteorite hunter, so it, it would have been really cool if I could have gone from this fall to that fall. That oh, would have like done it for me. But <laughs> fucking COVID, man. Yeah. If I may say something about this other fall, though, um, I find it really interesting that because of COVID, the country's closed off to foreigners. So that's a unique opportunity for like the. Uh, exchange of meteorites you know so for them i believe it's it's different of course right yeah you have a lot of people that aren't you know normally meteorite hunting now being contacted by yeah. people like us to say hey there's stuff there's money on the ground go pick it up yeah um so so that's so there's so there were there have been three falls this month, which is ridiculous. But um, there was Indonesia, where mm. the country was really close. A lot of people in Indonesia that are hunting or collecting meteorites. So that one specifically was was kind of like a hard to get one. 
the thing about Morocco is, from what I hear from other people, is there's an abundance of meteorite collectors out there. So we're and and they exchange and you know they they do a lot of business with Americans and people around the world, the, the meteorite community and the science community. So recovery of that one should be shouldn't be that difficult. Um, recovery of Indonesia was probably going to be the most difficult of these three. Um, this one being probably either the easiest or second easiest, just because mm -hmm. their their borders are open to us. We were. I was talking with uh, Dr. Lawrence Garvey at ASU about the Indonesian fall, and he said it's a, it's the dry season over in Sumatra right now. So at least that's one thing going in their favor because it was the rainy season; they'd be gone. Yeah, it's a dry season here too. Yeah. I would love to go to uh, over there. Yeah, Sumatra would be great. I mean, traveling is cool no matter what, and if you get to travel to like hunt meteorites, it's it's like it's just. I mean, it's. Yeah. layers of fun you know exactly for sure yeah all right so um stones yeah let's look at some stones so just okay so my phone is yelling at me telling me i am low on batteries for one second Now Raymond is Raymond uh, Borjas is going to be joining you later today. Yes. Nice. So we're actually like going to meet up for you know the evening and tonight, and then tomorrow first thing tomorrow morning I'm out of here, and then he's gonna kind of do the rest. Okay. Oh. Oh, I should also definitely don't um. Give a shout out to Mark Lyon. I don't know if he's, is Mark in here? No. So, so Mark is, um, Mark and I are kind of, you know, he's financially uh, invested in my trip down here. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Just put it like that. Yeah. So we've got meteorites. Wow. My God, look at how dark they are. And... Oh yeah, fresh, man. This wow. is super fresh. Got scale. So this was actually um, the first meteorite that um, I bought when I got over here. Wow. It's 116 grams. And it's, it's a part stone, but mm -hmm. um, there was no other there was no other fragments of this one found, which makes me think that there's got to be more out there. There, there has but to be. I looked, and the guy who sold this to me, yeah, I mean, that's a, that's a natural. That's a natural cleave on the on the reverse side. Is a natural cleave with absolutely no secondary crust whatsoever. So it broke up very low, uh, very late in its flight. Um, yep. Wow, God, you, the other half is there somewhere, man. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking. Oh, dude, dude it's, a, it's a beautiful stone, man. But, yeah, a beautiful half stone. And Can you tell where it might have broken ugly off? duckling, really. Where would it land, generally speaking, uh, with a couple miles, maybe? Um... Oh, I, I wouldn't even venture to guess. But yeah. it, it's got to be quite a distance. Not a couple miles. I think a couple miles. Yeah. I mean, if if this if this broke low in flight, it should it shouldn't be too far away from where this where this was found. I would think. Mm -hmm. I mean, if this didn't break somewhere and just bounce, you know, the other stone could the other half of this stone could just be laying around somewhere or. Maybe maybe Mike already bought the other half of the stone, <laughs> and we just haven't put them together yet. Yeah. Oh, look at that Here's one. Here's another one. So this one's cool because it's got primary with some dimpling. Yeah. Some regmaglyph, and then it's got secondary. Oh, yeah. So, you know, that one obviously broke up earlier in a flight and then has a little bit of secondary uh, ablation fusion crust on it. Um, 
glitch in the matrix. There we go. Man. Look at how you good you guys, you guys the, yeah, the contrast between the interior and the exterior is quite vivid. And then right where your thumb is on top, those white clasps up there. That's unique. Yeah, yeah I'd like I'd like to I'd like to have so, that in hand to look at that one. Yeah. So that so that first one's 116 grams. This one is 102 grams. The so, interesting thing is, as you can see, like these stones are not tiny stones. There were no, I have not. I bought one five gram and one seven gram stone, which I'm giving to my mom and my partner. But aside awesome. from that, there have been no, I have personally, and even Mike will tell you, like, it's, it's, it's you know, these three of them basically. Yeah, so this one has like grams, or they don't exist. So it's, it's awesome because it's, <laughs> yeah, exactly, man. Or, or they, or they, or they're fragments. So this one's cool because it's got like, oh. it's got, I don't know if, if it's coming to do that great, but it's, it's got some orientation yeah, it on does. it. It's got like, Prime, primary like like primary fusion crust it's got secondary fusion crust wow. and this is this is fusion crust i think that's like the so this didn't break up when it hit the ground this yeah uh, maybe slip inside i don't know it's a cool stone i like yeah, it, it wow yeah. it looks like it has oriented flow lines on the front Yep. Oh, Jeez. Yeah, that's coming through. Wow. It's four point yeah, five so, billion years and eight days old. <laughs> yeah. One hundred seventy-one grams. And and now for for my two. Yeah, go ahead. Oh, I was just going to say, and that's someone's house right there, those four meteorites. That's a new house for for the locals. Yeah, yeah. So so these four stones bought somebody a new house. That's phenomenal. That's, yeah. that's actually... So that's somebody's house. Yeah, that's actually inspiring that, you know, what we're doing, it, it, it trickles down and does some good. Absolutely, man. It helps the local economy. It, it, in general, it's just it's it's awesome. You know, we're bring, bringing money into these poor communities that would would really just not have um, some of those funds. Some of these people are going to be able to uh, buy their buy themselves like new motorcycles so that they can get to and from work. Um, you know, so it's in general, I feel I feel really good about this, and yeah. Uh, if, if I was if I was there, so, man, um, the I'd be taking two. yeah, I'd be taking long walks for my crafts, trying to find as many rocks as possible. Right, it's a, mm -hmm. dude. I'm telling you. This one's for wow, crust on all sides. Mm -hmm. and as you can see, it's like. It's it's got that that thing again where it's got like over it. It's got, it's got gentle. I think you had a little bit better uh, re uh, reception when you were outside. You're freezing up a lot right now. You think so? Yeah. Um. Yes, yeah, I want to see this one, but it keeps on locking up. What is that? Like, is that just reflection, or is that actually white in there? on that one um, really regmaglyph side. It's, it's a reflection. Okay. Okay. Wow. That is amazing, dude. Yeah. Roberto, I'm really glad that you were able to join us. Um, I mean, I this right here is, is up. Well, 
I'm, I'm really glad that you were able to join us, Roberto. Um, I know that um, the, the coverage there is kind of sketchy, but uh, we really appreciate you yeah. making time to, to double check back in, especially after last night. I felt like crap when, when we missed your content and, and I, I didn't, I'm like, come on. How often do you have one of your friends in Brazil hunting a meteorite and he just shows up on your live feed at the right exact time. So uh, I'm really, really super glad that you're out there having a blast, doing what you love, doing what makes us proud of you, bringing these uh, cosmic treasures. I have, one, I have one more, Topher. Oh, really? Go for mm -hmm. it. Am I, am, I, am I coming through? Yeah. Yeah. So um, and this was, all right, cool. So. You know what? Maybe I don't. Just a moment. Can I put you down for a sec? Yeah, absolutely. All right, you yeah. take over. I'll be right back. Okay. Yeah, and then, um, so this is our last check-in with Roberto. He's been there for a few days. We, we did a live check-in with him last night for the Hangout. Um, we're checking in with him now. Uh, and then Raymond is, is arriving there within an hour or two. They're probably going to have a little bit of a little bit of dinner, you know what I mean? And, uh, oh, Matt, whoa, put the whiskey down, Matt. Jesus. Jesus. <laughs> um, so we're going to be checking in with, uh, with Raymond um, uh, probably tomorrow uh, after he gets his feet wet in the field and maybe has some stories, some rocks to show. We're going to do another one of these. If, if more people can join us, great. If not, it'll at least be captured recorded and uh, and put on on youtube and facebook for all of us to enjoy um i have no monetary investment in this fall in their expedition in roberto or raymond none whatsoever uh i am strictly doing this so i have amazing content to offer my clients and i also want to make sure that my friends roberto and raymond have the reward not just of the experience but actually have the monetary reward for their investment uh, it is an expensive proposition to travel to take time off of work to put your life on hold to, to search for meteorites and a lot goes into it so um, i'm not making a penny off this at all i'm putting all all of the spotlight is going to be on roberto and raymond so they can sell all their rocks that they that they find and we can get them directly from the source thank you very much for uh having me this is this is awesome and what what happened yesterday was i was just like on my phone and um i got a notification that you were going on a zoom in a half hour and i was like wouldn't it be cool if <laughs> I was able to connect? And at first, I didn't think I was going to be able to because of the, the internet, but it worked out. Yeah, I was shocked. I started seeing everyone pop up in my windows. Um, as uh, I see everyone start popping up, and I see Roberto Vargas, and I'm like, well, that's, that's someone hacked his account. <laughs> he's, in, he's in Brazil. He has much more important things to do than deal with us. So. No, he took the time out and then also served as an impromptu interpreter for, um, for Jonathan. So we're going to have to have you help us with that again. I apologize. But all the best cosmic vibes to you. I really want you to have a successful hunt you got it. and safe travels. Thanks for checking in. We love you, buddy. Safe travels. Good luck. Take, take care, Roberto. Take care, Roberto. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Have fun, guys. Good night. Goodbye. Bye, dear.